Hello everyone, I'm Spaghetti, and welcome to episode 7 of more D&D stories from the internet. I have two stories, both about the same player. We're walking through a swamp when we come to a fork in the road. The path splits while the area directly in front of us is pure liquid marsh. One player decides to fork his own path by rejecting both sane options and jumping into the marsh. We've been dealing with his stupid choices for the entire game, so we all decide to just let him face the consequences. The player sees some glowing lights and starts following them, being the genre blind fool that he is. He kept on following the lights, deeper and deeper into the marsh. Short story short, it did not end well for him. During another campaign, we found ourselves trekking through the frozen tundra. The player decides to scout ahead, performing his action before we get a chance to explain the flaws in his plan. He eventually ends up on top of some rapidly breaking ice. Earlier in the game, he had rolled a 20 and made a 20-foot jump. Please note that this was just to get over a perfectly functioning bridge that the rest of the party just walked across. Rather than try to work his way over the ice and to the land, he tries to jump a giant patch of icy water. He only makes it halfway and has to swim to the shore. He gets hypothermia and has to wait for us to find him. I do some rudimentary healing, but he's still not doing great. He begins hiking up a mountain to reach our destination. He rolls low, slips, and injures himself further. Before I can try to heal him again, he encountered a Yule Cat. The monster ends up jumping on the player's back, digging his claws into the player's flesh. At this point, the player is genuinely nearing death, and would definitely be dead if our dungeon master was less merciful. Our party then comes up with the brilliant idea of coming together and pushing the cat off the mountainside. We do this realizing too late that this would take the player with it. Too long did not read. A player who survived hyperthermia, slipping on a mountain hundreds of feet high, getting attacked by a killer cat, and his own idiocy ends up being inadvertently killed by his own teammates. My character was falsely accused of a crime and put in a temporal prison in the Nexus for 400 years. When found innocent, I was sent back to the initial time, well, 10 years later thanks to a bureaucratic error, and given back my possessions, including my 5,000-ish gold with a mandatory compound interest. For 400 years, I wound up single-handedly funding a war later on in the campaign. I heard the story secondhand from a group of kids in middle school, so many of the details have been lost to time, but it's still pretty memorable. This adventuring party was exploring a dungeon, as you do, and in true RPG dungeon fashion, they came across a large stockpile of cheese. Being middle school kids, they thought it was the most hilarious thing in the world, and one of the players decided he was going to take all the cheese with him. Loading himself up with cheese wheels, he soon became over-encumbered and had no more room to carry the rest of the cheese. His friends certainly weren't going to help him. What was a dedicated dairy enthusiast to do? Why, stuff it in his armor slots. Of course! Dude stripped down to his most basic light clothes and stuffed cheese into every pocket and sleeve he had. Cheese was strapped to his body and wrapped around his arms and legs, piled atop his head until he was a veritable Michelin man of cheese. By the time he was done, he was wearing cheese clothes inside cheese armor and carrying even more cheese with him. The merry band of travelers, considering this a fine victory, headed back to town. One problem. A sweaty, unwashed medieval adventurer covered head-to-toe in dungeon cheese creates an absolutely unholy smell. The smell attracted a band of marauding orcs who proceeded to slaughter the entire party. We played through the world's largest dungeon campaign once. My husband started that campaign as some sort of complex, deep character that he put a lot of effort into making that promptly died after only three sessions. His fault. The Dungeon Master told us ahead of time that it was a lethal campaign. So for his second character, he essentially phoned in the creation process and made a min-maxed orc named Thugdar. Thugdar had the strength and intelligence of 10 tons of brick. He was actually a pretty entertaining character because my husband is random and funny as hell. For instance, Thugdar showed up in the dungeon sitting in a rowboat. No explanation. One time, my character tried to explain to Thugdar what an illusion was. I said, if you can put your hand through it, it's an illusion. He pulled something random out of his bag, some sort of squirrel skin, I think, and put his fist through it with a loud rip and declared that it was an illusion. 
Even though the rest of us enjoyed Thugdar, my husband actually started to get frustrated with him after a while. He told us that he felt like his hands were tied by Thugdar's stupidity whenever we were discussing something important. He didn't want to break character too much, but Thugdar was way too dumb to meaningfully contribute to planning sessions. The Dungeon Master came up with an ingenious solution. We came across a huge ominous looking axe named Black Razor. Nobody in the party used an axe except Thugdar, so of course he picked it up. Immediately his eyes turned funny, and he recited some creepy poem about crows eating a dead body in a strange voice. Turns out, Black Razor was a chaotic, evil, intelligent weapon. Black Razor's personality was so strong and Thugdar's will save was so weak that Black Razor could essentially take over Thugdar's body anytime it wanted. The genius part was that the Dungeon Master handed the keys for Black Razor to my husband. We'd been gaming together as a group long enough that the Dungeon Master trusted my husband to roleplay it well, and he did. When he felt like being a stupid idiot, Thugdar was himself. But when he needed to interject something intelligent to the conversation, Black Razor would speak up. Most of the time, Black Razor was content to follow along with the party, despite him being evil. But sometimes we had to convince him not to do something terrible. We were always worried about what Black Razor would do, but he was extremely useful when you were trying to escape a dungeon where everything wanted to kill you, and we didn't know how to disengage him from Thugdar without killing him. It was pretty fun for everybody. It was my first campaign, and it was quite a while ago, so I apologize if I get the stats and buffs wrong. As a little bit of background, I was a gnome, who was also a rogue, I believe. So heavy fortification on stealth, conversations, and robbery. Our dungeon master was a bit of a jerk. As he wanted us all to die to start a Fallout-themed campaign, he says trying everything in his might to kill us all, so he sent the giant blob. The blob tore through our fire and magic. Our weapons dissolved in its acidic body. So as the last, barely surviving member of our party, I offered to bribe the supposedly not sentient, acidic blob. Dungeon Master tells me to roll, bribery, I believe, or something of the sorts, and I rolled a natural 20, plus bonuses of my race class. Therefore, I set a bag of like 20 gold on the ground, and brainless blob of acidic gelatin takes the gold, and dissolves through the cracks in the walls. I take my sweet time healing and reviving my teammates through sheer bullshittery, and we continue off laughing our asses off with a very irritated dungeon master. A few years back, a friend was running a Pathfinder game. I joined in as a halfling bard, Archibald Shroudfoot who believed himself to be the son of the god of adventure himself. Archie specialized in conflict resolution, getting around obstacles through the power of sheer bullshit. We managed to avoid fights with centaurs, skeleton armies, and other awful shit, just because Archie was a powerfully skilled liar. Eventually, we find ourselves in an underground ruined city, under attack by living statues. They had attacked before, asking any questions, so all Archie could do was play his violin and hope his best friend, Thump, son of Thud, the party's barbarian, could keep him from getting real dead, real fast. Well, after a short fight, the leader of these living statues is killed, and the fight kind of grinds to a halt. When asked who their leader is, they point to the dead guy kind of impotently. When asked who their new leader was, I decided to step up and say, I am. The Dungeon Master had me roll, and knowing how unlikely it was to actually pull this off, I just kind of tossed my favorite d20 towards the middle of the table. It was a high toss, and when it hit the table, it didn't roll. It didn't bounce. Just stopped. On a natural 20. The living statues took a moment, then pointed to Archie. And that's how I became the King of the Gargoyles. My first ever playing with a very limited knowledge, I picked a mage wizard. I didn't realize when I was told to pick two level 1 spells that I would only be able to cast the spells once. So we start our first battle and I cast my spells and go to cast my spell for a third time and was told I was out of spell slots. Once the whole thing was explained to me, I felt pretty useless. Since I am a sarcastic asshole, my new move was stand around with my staff up my ass. Well, the dungeon master made me roll for it and I rolled a natural 20. I took two splinter damage and my staff became a poop stick. It had a chance to make enemies run away if I tried to poke them with the poop end. 
I was DMing a 12th level campaign in 3rd edition, and the party rolled a random encounter with an air elemental. There was a couple rounds of just bashing each other, when I realized how such a creature could fight much more effectively. I transformed to a whirlwind, spent one round running around the battlefield picking up the whole party, then the next round it flew 200 feet straight up and ejected them all, 20 d6 falling damage to everyone, and most of the party was near death. They dropped it before it could repeat the trick, so no deaths, but the party was really pissed at me for killing all their horses. It was a running joke for the rest of the campaign. I got one that's pretty amusing. One time we were all in an inn sleeping off a difficult battle with our chaotic evil rogue keeping watch. He hears something and goes to investigate. He finds a kid and helps him back to his house where he proceeds to hide in the shadows as this kid wakes up his mother and torments him from the shadows with his mage hand. So this kid gets more and more frightened while being held by his mother, and she can't figure out what the heck is going on. This is from myself DMing using the D&D starter set with a couple of mates. One of them was a mage. When a golden frog with emerald eyes came up as loot, she insisted on taking it because... What if it has mystical properties? Understandable assumption. It didn't. It was a hunk of treasure you sold for treasure. Anyway, we get back to... Feralden. Or whatever, I don't remember. Its name doesn't matter, and you'll understand why after reading all of this. And she goes up to a random person and asks how much it's worth. Hmm, I'd say it's worth ten gold. Is there anything else about it you could tell me? I don't know. You'd have to let me see it closer to know. So obviously, she gives this complete stranger the golden frog. I just start spouting words pretending the guy knows what he's talking about. The other people in the party are face-palming until he runs away with the frog. What? They decide they must get the frog back, so they split up into two teams. One team finds the golden frog, the other team comes across a giant wooden frog statue. When the mage describes the statue, the only description she gave was, it's a frog statue. So, the warrior who is demanding everyone call them a bard, but that's a story for another day. And the cleric are standing in front of the giant wooden frog. Cleric. I know a spell that can make it smaller, so we take it with us. I just need your oil and flint. Warrior. Okay, here. Cleric then proceeds to douse the frog in oil and sets it alight. The giant burning frog then causes half of the town to catch on fire. While they make their escape, the rogue remembers they have to rescue their great aunt. Rogue. Quick, we have to escape. Great aunt in her house that is currently burning around her. Really, you think? I was planning to just stay here in my warm house. So that's the story of how they managed to burn down half of an innocent town. Actually, this came last night. Our DM knows how we play. So he sets up quests, but also knows that those quests will likely be abandoned because we'll try to fight everyone possible. He used that to his advantage, and basically led us into a fight with an entire castle of Valkyries. We get to the top of the castle, and there are three Valkyries who he says, will mess you up, but you can try to talk to them to get out of the fight. My friend says, I have a casserole in my inventory. Can I give it as a peace offering? Dungeon Master. Uh, sure? My friend rolled a 20. The Dungeon Master threw his papers across the room while we laughed about our escape. A friend and I ended up at a bathhouse, and tried to smuggle weapons inside, which didn't go over well, in part because of some pretty bad charisma rolls. We were already wearing just towels around our waists, and our clothes were in a locker. Our insistence and bad rolls eventually got our dungeon master a little annoyed, and we were thrown out of the bathhouse, refusing to give up. We came up with the idea to cast grease on my friend, and try to have him slide past the guards. One bad roll later, he found himself being dragged off to jail after hitting a wall. I was left to run back to our inn naked, where the rest of our party was still sleeping off their over imbibement the previous night, so I could tell them what happened. I still insist that casting grease to run slide past the guards was a brilliant idea, even if it failed. My wife had begged me to join my group. I was a half-orc who put all of his adjustable stats into his fighting and stripped my intelligence. We had an adventure which took us into a town. I entered a tavern to get drunk and ran into the party that was sent to kill us. They all surround me and attacked. I rolled first on initiative, and cleaved through two on my first round. 
My wife from the door cast flame strike on me as a druid and rolled a 20 and straight sixes. She ended up dropping me and frying half of them. The group pulled me out and we ran. The cleric refused to heal my junk and left me a eunuch. My character was determined to die due to this and kept running into battle all Leroy Jenkins style. And that's about all we have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please click like. And if you haven't, please subscribe. And I hope you guys have a great day. See you later. All those moments lost in time.